continue to strengthen your mind and your heart, bring you into the knowledge of the kingdom, and may you, amen, add to your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding on a daily basis. Our scripture reading tonight will come out of Luke uh, chapter 11, beginning at verse 14 through 23. That we'll read in the New Living Translation. Praise God. The gospel according to Luke chapter 11, and that's part of your reading, amen, uh, for this week as well. Chapter 11, verses 14 through 23. Praise God. The emphasis this week is kingdom warfare. Amen. It's kingdom, amen, warfare. So we're going to start from that. We're going to leave, use Luke chapter 11, chap, chapter 11, verse 14 through 23 as foundation. And we're going to add to that Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 22. 15 through 22. And so that'll be the bulk of the time that we'll deal with on tonight because it's so rich and so relevant for where we're going. Luke now, chapter 11, verse 14 through 23 in the New Living Translation. And this is what it says. One day Jesus cast out a demon from a man who could not speak. <clears throat> and when the demon was gone out, the man began to speak. So the issue that the man had, they, the reason why he could not speak, he was mute, was demonic induced. Amen. Then the crowds were amazed. Verse 15. But some of them said, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Others trying to test Jesus demanded that they show them a, mir a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. He knew their thoughts. Glory to God. And he said, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed or any kingdom that's divided against itself. A family splintered by feuding will fall apart. Verse 18, you say I am empowered by Satan, but if Satan is divided and fights against himself, how can that kingdom stand or survive? And if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? They cast out demons too. So they will condemn you for what you have said. But if I'm casting out demons by the power of God, here's the key, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. Amen. If I am casting out demons by the power, by the finger of God, as it says in Mark, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For when a strong man is fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks, overpowers, strips him of his weapons, and carry off his belongings. Anyone who isn't with me oppose me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Ephesians now, amen, chapter 1, verse 15, is starting our place of reading, all the way down to verse 22 in the New King James Version. Amen. This is what it says. Therefore, I say, after I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not give cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Thank you, Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the, inherit, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of his power, glory to God, towards us who believe, according to the working of the mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities, spiritual, amen, principalities, powers, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, and put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to give you seven keys to successful spiritual warfare. 
Amen. Seven keys to successful spiritual warfare. Amen. This the the uh first key that I want to give, and this is the bulk of what we're saying on tonight, is amen, understanding your spiritual identity. Amen. So the first key is identity. Who am I in Christ? Who am I in Christ? Amen. When we understand who we are and that we've been empowered by the Spirit of God, amen, in the earth realm, and when we know what the Word of God says, we become, an, amen, a type of, amen, demonic terrorist to the enemy. Praise God, we become a type of demonic terrorist. Amen. What the devil actually sees is not us. He sees the Christ in us. He says, Jesus, I know Paul I, and Paul, I know. And so it's not Paul that so much he is yielding to as it is the Christ in the form of the Holy Spirit that was in him. When we see in Mark in the fifth chapter, when the madman at Gadara came out of the tomb, and uh, worshiped him, the question was, amen, we, and the, the statement was, first of all, we know who you are. You're the son of the living God. We know who you are. Have you come to torment us before time? That was the, that was the uh, kind of the census from the gospel, amen, uh, to the book of Acts. You see that the enemy recognized that one more powerful than, than they has arised. And he has the ability to torment. Actually, in the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, you see that they are actually begging for their existence. They don't want to be disembodied. They, amen. The demons did not want to be disembodied. So if they couldn't have a human host, they uh, chose themselves to um, opt into an uh, animal host, thinking they could get away. But when the demons went into the hogs, they ran down the hill, amen, and over the cliff. As a result, they still were disembodied. But the emphasis was they recognized Christ. They knew, amen, they just was in a different realm on earth. Christ was in heaven. But when Christ showed up in the earth realm, they knew the dealings. They've had dealings with Christ, understood exactly who he was and what he was capable of. Amen. And that same power, that same ability that is in Christ is also in us. You and I have to just learn the rules of engagement. Praise God. Learn the rules of engagement. Amen. So the first matter that we have to deal with is identity. In Ephesians 3 and 20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all, we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The power that works in us. Amen. Key number one is identity. Key number one is identity. When we understand who we are and we understand the power that we have received, Amen. The authority and the uh, power, the exousia and the dunamis, praise God. At that point, we are legally deputized to be a demonic, amen, terrorist. The name of Jesus. In the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand. Amen. Then it begins to tell us each part of that armor of God. Amen. So when we understand, beloved, that we are seated in heavenly places, far above principalities, far above these spiritual wickedness and this darkness, amen, we are seated in high places in Christ. Praise God. We, at that point, become empowered 
with the mindset to understand that we have a, in us, if indeed you be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, the power, amen, to engage and to become victorious over all forms of demons. Glory to God. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What your adversary does not want you to know, do not want you to know, uh, first of all, is for the believer to be educated, indoctrinated about their identity. Once you get that in your spirit, amen, identity banish insecurities. Identity banish insecurities. Identity, identity press out fear and unbelief because why? I understand I am the citizen of the kingdom of heaven. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit of promise. You and I, beloved, have to develop first a private confidence before we have a public debut. David had a confidence in the power of God first in private with the lion and the bear before a man he engaged in public with a man Goliath. Glory to God. Amen. So he was well acquainted with what he had been given in private. He became well aware of what was in him and its power, its possibilities, its potential in private. And so when he uh, we got ready to confront Goliath, he had this confidence that, amen, uh, and God did that, amen, I'm going to give your carcass to the birds of the air. And today you're going to find out that there's a God in Israel. Glory to God. Amen. So the first thing that you uh, we're developing and the purpose of the theme for the 40 days uh, is the king and his kingdom. The very purpose of that is so that you establish in yourself, amen, that you are royal. Amen. You are royal. You have royal lineage. You are in the, you are a business partner with the creator of the universe. You have been accepted in the beloved, raised, amen, to the newness of life by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. We're baptized into him, and we believe the word of God, glory to God, that greater works we're going to do because, amen, Christ went to the Father. Glory to God. And that same power, that same dunamis and exousia that is in, was in Christ, glory to God, is now resided in us. When I understand who I am and whose I am, and I walk in a great level of boldness because my confidence in my identity, at that point, I become, amen, like some spiritual, a, a demonic terrorist, like Samson. He terrorized the Philistines. Glory to God. Amen. Sometimes warfare increase, which is a compliment that you are raising so much sand you, you, amen, you are a glory to God. You're giving the enemy such a hard time. Amen, he got to raise the stakes because you can't be just let to run and to continue to ravage the, amen, the enemy's kingdom. Praise God. Sometimes spiritual attacks on your life is a demonic compliment that you're doing the right thing. Praise God. Key number one is identity. Glory to God. Before you engage, if you have time, Amen. Go over who you are in Christ. You ought to have that in the spirit. You ought to have those scriptures. You ought to understand I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Nothing I can engage or come in confront confrontation to. The only reason I can't handle it is one or two reasons. Amen. Number one is because uh, the lack of fasting and prayer or number two, I'm operating in pride. I'm engaging in something I haven't been authorized to. It's only two reasons. I mean, both of them are cured, or the answer to both are in prayer. The answer to both are in prayer. Uh, amen. Key number one, praise God, is identity. The second key is functioning. Amen. The second key to becoming successful in spiritual warfare is functioning. How to execute my weapon. How to execute. I need to know how to function in Christ. Glory to God. Amen. 
Many times we are equipped, but we don't, we're not functioning. The entire book of Ephesians, and particularly chapter 1, 2, and 3, addresses a people in Ephesus who are functioning and living well below their potential. Paul writes to them and begins to let them know, first of all, identity and doctrine, who they are, who they are, amen, what has been done so they can do so that the believers in Ephesus, and you and I for that matter, amen, can uh, understand how we got to this place. Glory to God, amen. And as a result, we shouldn't live subpar below our potential. Glory to God, functioning, amen. Got to know how to function. Got to know how to use your voice. Got to know, there's so many scripts, I can't go over them all. Amen. Got to know, praise God, the reality of Christ in your life. Colossians 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. Amen. This is, this is one scripture I use often, and the emphasis is in verse 14 and 15. But in verse 11, for clarity, in him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, putting off the old body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Amen. There's another type of circumcision. Has nothing to do with that of cutting off the physical flesh. It is that that Christ does in the heart. Buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead, and you, being dead in your trespasses, uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses. Look at verse 14. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and having taken it out of the way, he nailed it to the cross. Thank you, Father. Having disarmed principalities and powers and have he, he made a man a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it thank you glorious god amen what the enemy thought he was doing if he could just get jesus out of the way all would be well but he didn't know that the same time he was nailing his hands and piercing him in the side at the same time he was a man crucifying christ simultaneously, Christ was making the enemy into a public spectacle, amen. When he nailed all of our requirements that was against us, it was nailed to the cross. Jesus took himself, satisfied himself, shed his own blood, took his blood into the heavens and poured it on himself, satisfying God's royal requirement, amen, to God be the glory. On the cross, he disarmed principalities and power, amen, and he made them into a public spectacle. Sometimes the enemy gets amnesia, and you have to remind him the victory that has already been procured by the blood of Christ, amen. Functioning, how do I function in this? Praise God, the weapons of our warfare, amen. I need to know the power of my word, what it is to be have the shield of faith, what it is, amen, to, to walk in the, the shoes, preparate, amen, prepared for the gospel. Glory to God. So functioning is key. If we're going to have successful spiritual warfare, the second thing is function. How do I execute, amen, my weapon in God? The third thing is humility, amen. The third thing is humility, submission to the will and to the instructions of God. Order must be given before we can get engaged. Orders must be given before we can engage. Submission is the key to the will of God. That exousia, glory to God, means authority. From that word authority means authorized. Praise God. Amen. So we cannot engage until we get the green light. What your adversary would want you to do is operate in that same spirit that got him cast down from heaven in the first place, and that is a spirit of pride. He wants you in that same spirit because he knows 
If you are in that spirit, you will not wage a successful campaign. Glory to God. So as citizens, we got to know how to hear and uh, follow instructions. We've taught this out of the, the Old Testament, but we'll just re reference it. Amen. Jericho was actually already defeated once the angel of the armies of God appeared. It was a done deal. Amen. It was already done. But the other part was about circumcision. It's about, it was about, that's about covenant and about following directions. Glory to God. It's about following directions. So uh, humility is the bigger part. What your adversary, amen, wants to trick you into doing and you becoming an unwitting demise to your own downfall is to engage in a prideful way. To engage in a pride-filled way. Amen. And how does that work? When you're pride-filled, it, it is something that we do to demonstrate who we are. Puff up ourselves, our title, our church, our charisma. Amen. But in humility is, as David said, that you may know that there is a God in Israel. And that saying is that God is going to get the glory out of this. Praise God. I don't want you to see me. Amen. In the book of Acts, the third chapter, when, G, when Peter and, uh, uh, and John at the gate called Beautiful, there was a man laid there who had not walked all of his life. And you know the storyline. He looked upon them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the man grabbed his hand. He leaped up. He stood dancing and praising God, followed them into the temple. And all of the people that were there looked amazed, looked in amazement at Peter, looked in amazement at John concerning the thing that had happened to this man that they saw daily laid at the gate, a man begging, had no form of very little form of personal mobility. And they started looking like something's got to be God. Peter says, what are you looking at? Glory to God. The, amen. The Jesus that you crucified, the holy, the just one, the one you pierced, amen, by his power and his might, did this man have this soundness as you see he has? Amen. Don't look at me like that. It's not about me. It's about Jesus the Christ. See, that's, that's the kind of humility God wants. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We got too many people, amen, say that, but and God knows, and he's the only one that tests our heart. So key number one, you have to engage, uh, if you want successful warfare, humility. Humble yourself under the power of God. Steal your person on the inside. Begin to listen to God's instructions on how he wants to proceed how he wants you to engage. Glory to God. Amen. And don't try to, we should be careful not to engage the same way every time because, amen, trust and believe he has many uh, ways to go about doing that. Amen. Praise God. So that's that's key. So, amen, so seven keys to successful spiritual warfare. First of all, it begins with identity. Number two, functioning. Number three, humility. Praise God. Number six, strategies. Amen. Strategies. What is the Lord saying? Amen. And how do we proceed? Praise God. David normally asked the Lord questions, amen, in at least two at a time. Amen. At least two. Shall I pursue? And if I pursue, shall I overtake them? Praise God. Amen. So David was about specifics. So you and I, beloved, we need strategies and we need them to be uh, very specific from the Lord. Amen. And many times what happens if we're not careful, praise God, we, are, we will uh, have all kinds of stuff going on, but not the right strategies. Praise God. So number four, we need, amen, the proper strategies. Number four, number one, identity. Number two, functioning. Amen. That's personal. Number three, humility. Number four, strategies. What is the Lord saying? How do I proceed? 
Glory to God. How do I proceed? What's the next step? Amen. And if you are with a group and you are purposing an engagement with the enemy, we have to sanctify ourselves. We do know that. Began to pray and ask God about how to proceed, which way to go, what method to use, who's going to, amen, the God was, amen, the Holy Spirit would sanctify us a leader, praise God. And so we have to be able to do that strategies. Amen. The enemy is very strategic towards us. And so you and I, beloved, we must strategize against him. When you read in the Bible, the Philistines were always, amen, strategizing against Israel. Always had some type of way to, amen, uh, release some kind of trick attack, surprise attack, amen, against Israel. But God always released strategies, in particular to Samuel, against Israel. Uh, Israel and to David. Praise God. Tell him to circle around by the other side. Praise God. Don't go up like you did last time. Those are different strategies and techniques that you and I need engage in spiritual warfare. We need some, we need another strategy from God. If you're in a church or even personal and what you have been doing is not yielding any results. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Take time out. Fast, pray, seek the Lord. Ask God for, amen, different strategies. Praise God. Sometimes that strategy is a lack of the right personnel. Either no personnel, you're going at it too much alone. Amen. Because there's power in touching and agreeing. One can chase a thousand. Two can put 10,000 in flight. It may have something to do with the fact that you're trying to do it by yourself. The other fact it could be is that you're taking with you the wrong kind of people. When Jesus engaged in some healing and deliverance, amen, he put out some people in some cases, as in the healing of Jairus' daughter, he didn't take all 12, only Peter, James, and John, amen, because he had to use, check this out, say, a different strategy. Glory to God, Amen. And sometimes that strategy involves the right, or the right or the wrong people with you are not enough. Amen. Strategic. We need strategic plans from God when we're doing warfare, especially when it involves your house. Amen. It involves your children because, the, amen, their adversaries now, they're releasing all kinds of strategies uh, against our children. Glory to God. And so as he is strategizing against us, we need to turn the corner and strategize against him. In the name of Jesus, that's number four. Number five, amen, above all, well, all of them are equal, I guess, amen, repentance. Prayer and repentance. Number five, repentance. We should never engage without forgiveness of sin. Never engage the enemy without asking for forgiveness of sin and repenting. Never engage because demons can talk and demons can discern when we're not in the right place and we're, when we are against the principles of God. And I've seen situations where the demons began to talk. The individuals there didn't have proper warfare techniques and that demon began to tell of the personal life that the individual was... Uh, uh, engaged in in his personal life and uh, he was near the altar unrepented and he began to tell, tell him, you can't tell me nothing because blah, blah, blah. Glory to God. Amen. So he'll, the enemies will always try to use anything they can to disgrace the body of Christ. Amen. So if you plan to engage, you got to have repentance as for forgiveness. And most of the time in the worship service, it is to your advantage. Every time you come to the worship, it's engaged in a level of repentance and asking for forgiveness of sin because you never know what day. You never know what day, amen, is going down. You never know what day is going to be a day of engagement. Praise God. And we have to have the right type of strategies. Amen. One of that, that strategy is repentance, the asking of forgiveness of sin, Never engage, amen, in spiritual warfare without uh, 
asking for forgiveness. Amen. That's number six. Praise God. That's number six. Uh, the last thing, and I know I'm, yeah, amen. The last thing that we deal is endurance. Amen. Endurance. There are times when the battle will rage hot. And there are times when the then demons are trying to grandstand, especially when you're dealing on the altar. Praise God. And that's why you have to change strategies. You may have to have prepared people alternate, especially when you're dealing with strong demons. Or if you're dealing with a, a man, one that seems like it's just not moving, we're going to back up and get another strategy. Amen. So we have to endure, back up, get another strategy, go into fasting and prayer, and then we'll engage. Glory to God. So we need, we need endurance. We have many times, beloved, we go from one battle to the other, one fight to the other. And so we need, amen, endurance while we are engaged. If we're going to be successful in spiritual warfare, you need to understand the rules of engagement. Praise God. Uh, don't be so, we can't be so uh, excited to we don't have proper instructions. Amen. Excited to we don't, where we don't have proper instruction, the proper mindset. Out of Luke 11, I'll say this and I'm, I'm getting ready to close, is that Jesus teaches us a principle that, amen, before the kingdom of God shows up, there are other principalities, other wickedness, and that are part of the demonic kingdom that has his good. There's, they are guarded, his palace is guarded, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks. These are warfare words. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. They attack, overpower, strip. Attack, overpower, and strip him of his weapons and carry off his belongings. Glory to God. Amen. That's what believers do. We carry out whatever he thinks his belongings. That, and, and, and especially souls that he just knew was his until Jesus returned. Amen. We carry them off. Glory to God. Amen. It is exemplified in David when he says he rescued the lamb from the mouth of the lion. Amen. Glory to God. And so we have that in our, we got to get that in our spirit. Identity is number one. Functioning. We need to know how to function. Amen. How to use our weapons that we've been equipped with. Praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Worship is a weapon. The power of your voice is a weapon. Confessing your victory before you win is a weapon. Praise God. We need to learn how to intimidate the enemy before we engage. Hallelujah. Functioning. Identity, number one. Functioning, number two. Humility. Praise God. We can't operate and engage against the enemy in a spirit of pride because that's his territory. Amen. Number four is strategies. Strategies. Amen. Be praying the whole time. Okay, God, what are you saying? How do you want to handle this? Which way to go? Amen. You know, what What? What? What to use? Who to bring along? We need strategies. Glory to God. The, as number four, number five, glory to God, we need uh, repentance. Hope I'm saying that right. Repentance. Praise God. Repentance. Amen. That's that's key. Never engage without repent. Amen. repenting. And then lastly, we need endurance. Praise God. And I hope I got that right. No, I didn't. Praise God. Amen. Uh, and so that's six. And tomorrow we'll, we'll fill in the gap for what else that we need. Amen. So my be beloved, my point to you, if you don't know nothing else we said tonight, it's about identity. Amen. I said six, but it's, I mean, seven, but it's only six. Amen. Keys to successful warfare. Listen, beloved, here's the deal. Do your homework. Do your homework. How did Jesus handle demons? What kind of preparation did he have? Praise God. He didn't just go in and start engaging. You got to read Luke 4 when dealing with the uh, the wilderness experience, the fasting and prayer. You got to understand that level of warfare before we can graduate to the next level. Praise God. Jesus defeated the warfare upon him on himself first before he was empowered to go on further against to uh deliver others. Amen. So you got to war from within. Amen. Got to war from within. If you're fasting and temptation 
is escalated, that is an indicator that the enemy don't want you to come out of this battle with what you're receiving in your spirit. It is an indicator that the enemy is trying his best to stop you before your tank becomes full, before you become all the way charged up, because before you come all the way empowered, glory to God, he want to stop you before that point. And if you yield to temptation, if you are distracted, if you allow any of that opposition to get you off, he understands you can engage, but there's only so much you can do because the wilderness test, you failed. We failed. Amen. So if you're headed to an assignment, got to say this and I'll let you go. If you're headed to uh, an assignment from Christ, a ministry assignment, and you're fasting and praying in preparation to that assignment, and warfare go through the roof, it is a demonic compliment that the enemy is telling you you're headed in the right direction, I, and I see if you keep going like you're going, you're going to do something. Amen. You're going you're gonna to take back territory that he's won. You're going to become, amen, a terrorist to my kingdom. Amen. And so he'll try to stop you before you get to that assignment. Know this in your spirit, beloved, and I'm done. If you are fasting and praying on an assignment that God has given or desire you want from God and demonic temptation increase, it is an indicator that you are doing the right thing. You're headed in the right direction. All that you have in you do not yield to temptation. Amen. Get friends, get some amen accountability, but whatever you do, don't yield to what the enemy is suggesting. Defeat him as Christ did with the word and it simply is, it is written. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. So fasting and prayer has to be an integral part of our relationship with God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your empowering in the name of Jesus. You've given us great and precious promises. Teach us how to walk circumspectly. Teach us how to walk and how to engage and how to demonstrate the power that is in the kingdom. And then you be glorified and not us. I thank you. I bless you. Give you praise. You alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.